I am Atesh Sharma, senior editor at Home Crux Magazine. We've been covering tiny houses for a decade and have interviewed many eminent personalities, including the likes of Pritzker Prize architecture director, Salon Del Mobile president, Oscar winning production designers, and many tiny houses CEO, including the likes of Tiny Mountain Houses. Uh, Fritz mm-hmm. Tiny Homes, Minimaliste, Aussie Tiny Houses, and many other. And it's a pleasure to have you, Travis, with us today. Yeah, appreciate it. Good to be here. It's it's really great that you found time to talk to us. So please tell us a little about uh, your tiny house company, that is Wind River Tiny Homes. Where did you derive the name from? Uh, so Wind River Tiny Homes is named after uh, the Wind River Range in uh, northwestern Wyoming. Uh, so it's just part of the Rocky Mountain Range, and it's or the whole Rocky Mountains, um, and it's the, called the Wind River Range. It's kind of a remote mountain range, and our family grew up uh, backpacking, fishing, climbing. That was one of our destination uh, vacations since I was five years old. I think I've been there 15 times. So when I started the company, I was trying to come up with a clever name that had to be that was in the construction realm or simple living and you know trying to tie it into what tiny homes were and nothing stuck and then I just wanted to keep it simple with uh you know and wind and river are just two element names and uh so it kind of kind of stuck I didn't even know if it was going to be long term it was just I needed a name to register the company and um and now we just kind of go by wind river it's like we don't even uh you know we're wind river tiny homes but kind of just known as wind river and what brought you into the business of building tiny homes? How did it all start? Um, so I've been in the trades, skills, construction, all the way back to seventh grade. Um, I homeschooled seventh grade and helped, and our family built our own log cabin. Uh, my grandpa and dad was a contractor. And that's what I did for school that year was helped build the house. So I've always been fascinated with architecture and design and um constructing and then I worked for different trade skills through high school and college uh and then I think it was in 2012 or 13 I heard about tiny homes in a local newspaper um what was the company it was tumble 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 Tumbleweed. tiny homes yeah they're like the and Jay Schaefer that's you know started Jay that Schaefer, back in the day he's often tumble- regarded as the father of tiny house movement yep yeah so it was an article about tumbleweed in our local newspaper here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, I just saw that and was like, that's something that I could easily do. I mean, I had the skill that I'd done all sorts of different things in construction. And so I bought a trailer on Craigslist the next week. I, I was very much, I'm very much, a, you know, once I decide to do something, I probably jump into it before even doing all, all the, all the homework and numbers and stuff. I just bought a trailer and started to build one in. I was still my parents' house, so I was building it in their driveway. And that was in 2012. Uh, I spent about a year building it, or a year and a half, just evenings and weekends um, when I wasn't uh, doing my other job. And I think I built it for about sixteen to 18000 bucks. I mean, I was very scrappy, um, pulled it all together, and then did all the labor myself. So definitely not a realistic number now. You know, people see that, and it's like, I, you know, I went to job sites and got all the uh, the wood that wasn't used that was still good and like collected that, denailed it, got the straight ones. That that was like my framing. Uh, went to Habitat for Humanity for a variety of things. So that's the Wind River bungalow um, that you can you see on our site, um, our first kind of legacy build. Um, and then from there, so my wife and I got engaged halfway through. I mean. As I was building it, she kind of realized like, oh, I might be living in this thing with him. And so we moved into it right after we got married and lived in it for four years, um, 200, 192 square feet. So it's to date, this one of the probably the smallest home we've built. We know we don't actually even build them that tiny um, anymore. And so we lived in that for four years. And then a, a friend wanted one and somebody else wanted one. And that's when started the, the company in 2014. You registered the company in 2014. Yep, yep. <clears throat> that was myself. So I started after building that one and then starting the second one. And then a, a friend of mine kind of joined in right from the start. And he's no longer with the company. And then another mutual friend of ours joined two or three months later. So he's been here from the beginning. Uh, we 
talked him away from the job he was doing to come do that full time. And he and I are still um, co-owners of the, the company. Travis, there's still a lot of obscurity about what a tiny house on wheels is and how is it different from a park model? If you could just elaborate and uh, make our viewers understand what's the basic difference, what's the core difference between the two terms, a park model and a tiny house on wheels. Is a park model mm -hmm. a tiny house in itself or are they different? Really? Yeah, this, in the simplest way, they're not different. Um, I guess what would be different is all of our all of our homes are park model tiny homes. So uh, several years ago, I don't know, maybe four years into the business, um, we most most tiny home builders started realizing like they needed to get that third party certification to so they're essentially RVs at the end of the day, like the classification that they fall into is a park model recreational vehicle. Um, and so there's third parties that you they come in and like review your facility and um, certify your facility and we do testing and like visual testing and video walkthroughs um, and it's built to the uh, the ANSI, I don't remember the numbers now, but it's like the ANSI code of park models, uh, but it's still a tiny home. We decided not to add park models into our, our, you know, our old logo. We just wanted to keep it tiny home. So there's really, it might be confusing, but the only difference I would say is if you're a tiny home builder and you're not getting your home certified by a third party, you can't, you shouldn't use park model in your branding or marketing or in your name, because that means it's certified to the ANSI code. So but at the end of the day, park model and tiny home, um, pretty much the same thing as far as size. And, you know, some people build really cheap ones and, uh, and then others build really nice ones. So that's kind of the difference. Is there a specific reason why you're not inclining towards uh, building smaller tiny homes? Well, they've gotten bigger and bigger over the years. It's just, I think, kind of, we still build some 24-foot home as the, our smallest model, and we still sell a handful of them, but they're 24 by 8.5, completely road legal, don't need any permits. And then you go to, then we started building 30 by 10. You have to pull a permit to move a 10-foot wide. Um, and then our, then we went up to 38 by 10 uh, up until a year and a half ago, a 38 by 10 was our largest model. And we had two bedrooms, a main level bedroom, a loft bedroom, and then one and a half bath. So a full master bath on the main level and a little half bath under the loft. So that was kind of like our, our big one. And then this year we came out with three 45 foot by 12. And that that hits the uh, the maximum square footage a park model can be. So park models can't exceed 400 or 399 square feet, except maybe in Florida. Florida might have an exception. So, so that's a um, 12 foot wide. You have to have permit and a and flags. Sometimes a pilot car, um, and all of those have an integrated deck into them. So they're 45 feet long, but 10 feet of that is a covered deck. And that's what you see um, a lot of the big legacy park model builders that have been around a long time, you know, like Clayton Homes and Cavco. You know, there's some big, big, they build like a thousand a year, just cranking them out. Um, it's funny. I, I just was at a show last week, um, an RV recreational vehicle campground convention and was talking to some of those guys that are, have been doing the legacy park model builders and, they know park models and then they're kind of like adopting tiny homes, like because of the popularity, like that terminology, but like they've been building these things since the park models, since like the, I guess, seventies, eighties, nineties. And then we're as the tiny home builders adopted park model to like, so we kind of were each grabbing uh, the terminology that the others had been using just to like legitimize, you know, the product. Uh, has it, um, has it makes, got something that, that to sense. do with the trend as well? Uh, has the demand for park models spiked over years and more and more people are drifting towards park model rather than a compact home? I think I think so. I think the tiny home movement and that whole thing over the last 10 years has really helped these older legacy park model builders, you know, the mobile, and a lot of them are mobile home builders as well, which is, you know, or a manufactured home. Um, I think it helped boost them and then you know a lot of us tiny home builders you know we build like a craftsman style home it all came out of just like the 
the idea of living simply in just a small house and being movable. I didn't even know what a park model was or that there were these other big companies making movable. I knew single wides and double wides, but so I think this whole movement has probably spurred their sales, I would guess. I'm, I'm not actually sure though. <clears throat> Travis, over the past 10 years, a lot of manufacturers have shown up in the U.S. tiny house market. Has it got something to do with the increasing demand? Are more and more people drifting to tiny house lifestyle? And another question that I want to ask is, what do these people do with their regular homes? Right. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, especially in the last 10 years with the, the economic climate and I think just the generation, you know, the boomers that have their big homes that are probably paid off and like their goal was to sell those things that, you know, maybe when they move on to like their retirement home or whatever, it's like this next generation, I don't think for the most part is looking for some gigantic home that you don't spend much time in. Like it's, it's is more it, of is a, it the Gen the, Z generation or I think um, is it the millennials? Yeah, probably both Gen Z and millennials of, uh, I think more people are traveling, people, the family size and that there's statistics, you know, family sizes are getting smaller um, and people are wanting more of an experiential lifestyle. You're, you're going out to eat, you're going away for the weekend, you're, you're out doing stuff like the home maybe is less of a, like a huge typical suburban home maybe is not as sought after. Um, and I think but then, so on our end, what we like to provide is, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't call us an affordable housing builder. There's there's builders out there that can build a, an affordable tiny house better than us. But uh, intentional design, quality craftsmanship, and just like a space that you want to be in, like a really nice intentional space. So I think people are wanting to live in something that's easier to maintain, a, a cheaper entry level home. Now it costs you know, four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars to build or get into a nice, you know, brand new nice home. And so we're we kind of like to think of it as like the old starter, the starter homes of old, like the the Sears catalog homes where you order your little home and it was, you know, back in the day. Um, I think that's coming back that this generation wants to live in um com alike communities, whether it's a community or you're out in the country off grid. Uh a small, really beautiful, well-built space, but not looking for the square footage as much. I, th I think that's a trend. And how do you see the future of tiny house movement in USA? Are people garnering interest in living tiny or do you see a spike in people who want to live in a tiny house? What's what's the future for tiny house movement? Yeah, well, so for park model tiny homes, um, I think there's a demand for people wanting to live in them, but it's it's difficult of where do you place, where do you put them, where do you park them? That's kind of the big hurdle, which there's been progress over the years, but at any point, you know, the government and HUD could, and, and states could just say, you know, shut down, like, oh, you can't park um, a movable park model home in your backyard, or you can't, it can't be a permanent, you can only live there two months out of the year or vacation. A lot of them are used as vacation rentals or short-term hospitality rentals. In fact, that's a lot of our customers now are second homes, Airbnbs. But we get so many inquiries of people that probably would have us build them a tiny home, but depending on where they live, they would have to move to another state or move further rural. It's easier to put one you know, out in the country on land that's zoned agricultural country. So that's a big hurdle. If that got unlocked or more progress is made, I think the tiny homes on wheels would continue to increase or it would even, if it was made more available. And then financing, yeah, there's decent financing options, but essentially you're buying an RV, which is personal property, which devalues. It's like buying a car. As soon as it rolls off the lot, it loses value. It's not a an appreciating asset. So that's a big that's a big thing. So the interest rates and the loans you get for that are not like a home mortgage. They're higher interest rates. You can't get like a 20, 30 year term on a tiny house. So that blocks a lot of people out from being able to uh, finance it. So making it more legal to park it and better financing would open up, I think, 
uh, the market even more. So, and then that kind of leads into, and maybe you're going to get to it, why we are starting a second branch of Wind River, Wind River Modular, um, still building our product, our designs, small footprint, not on a trailer. Um, and our homes will be built in a factory, transported to the site, craned and set on a foundation. Then you can get a traditional mortgage, traditional financing, 30-year term, and it's a real asset that appreciates. All of a sudden, the market just got huge. A lot of people can can do that. So that's, as we were looking to grow the company, it was just obvious that like, let's not abandon the park model tiny homes. And we're still championing that. But, you know, with some partners that came on board um, to help us grow to this next level, it's like, uh, it would have been too high risk to build a hundred thousand square foot facility and just go it all in on just park model tiny homes. So, so that's our new, um, we're actually rebranding. So Wind River Built is our new kind of parent name. Uh, so it's a different logo, a little, a uh, little bit different logo, Wind River Built. And then our two product lines are Wind River Tiny Homes, Wind River Modular. So you'll start seeing that actually here very soon. We've kind of been teasing it and putting that logo out there. It'll be confusing for those that have followed us over the years probably. Um, but our new website that's coming out, it'll it'll be very clear that we are now we'll keep an eye on built. we'll keep an eye on it and uh, just to let you know that uh, when you released cumberland and we covered it on home trucks there were like hundreds of queries about uh, people asking us who to contact how to buy this tiny house is it available mm. for purchase so what i want to ask you next is uh, was cumberland is it a one off build is it a custom design tiny home or is it like have you got um, many other uh, models of it as well um, so we have one for sale right now, just outside actually. It, so we, that's one of the three 45 foot long ones that we just developed this year. So it's, it's a standard plan that you can then customize and, you know, there's things you can do to make it different. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the ones that we offer. And I feel like it's a really popular one. We've built a few cause we just launched it this year. We've sold a couple as like custom builds to buyers. And then we've started building some spec homes for for inventory. The one that's for sale now, we're actually putting it on a little piece of land that we bought in a tiny home community in the country. Um, it's going down tomorrow and we're going to try to sell the whole package, you know, the lot and the home all together. So yeah, if people wanted to reach out to us about that one, um, that's, we don't have an inventory beyond this one we're selling, but um, definitely could reach out. And that's one of the ones that we offer. What are the future models you're working on? Because uh, when I was scouring your website, I saw Pisca and it is mm -hmm. slated a release in November and I'm still waiting when would the official photos be available. And there's one another yeah. house that I'm not able to recall at the moment. I guess... The, te the Teleco. So Teleco, the three new yes. ones, Teleco. Yep, the Teleco. That one has actually been going around the country a little bit. It was at an international building code convention last month, the ICC, that's like the international code council. We got invited to represent the tiny home industry. I think this is pretty, you know, the more it got closer to that event and afterwards, it was like a pretty big deal that we were there to represent tiny home builders to the international building code, the IRC who like governs all the residential and commercial code. Um, the tiny house industry association thea that's kind of the governing body of the tiny home industry um, we're very much involved our cfo is on the board of directors thea had a booth at that convention invited us out to it with one of our homes so that hundreds of inspectors and government officials the people you probably don't want always crawling around your home we took our home there to show like how well they can be built and you're talking of you know, teleco here right but yes yeah, so that that's where i was going with that 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 was our teleco first teleco model that we actually didn't sell it's it went to that had an excellent show great feedback and there's now talks of trying to create over the next few years a new adopted code of the irc that's specific to tiny homes on wheels so it'd kind of be like they're no longer rvs because they're not that's just what they have to be they're built better than rvs they're built different um so we're kind of that's us still championing and like front lines advocacy like let's make the tiny homes more available. So the teleco was at that. And then last week it was in Kansas city for that big, um, 
outdoor recreational camp, uh, ARVIC, ARVC, their big annual co- convention. Um, park model builders are out there, yes. campground vendors. And then in two weeks, it's at the Campground Owners Expo out in Branson, Missouri, the Teleco model. And then after that, we're trying to sell, you know, it'll either sell at the event or we'll bring it home and sell it. So, and we have one more in production right now. So we're just, um, we're not like the big builders where they just crank them out and they have like an inventory. We're still, you know, in 11,000 square foot shop. We can build maybe 35, 40 homes a year. So it's always been build for a customer. Um, we've never had the business model of just they're stacked up outside and like we're sending them to dealerships. That's the companies that build a thousand a year have their distribution dealer network and they're sending them all over the country and then dealerships are, are selling them. So, um, but yeah, those are the three models. I'm sure you saw the Pisgah. Um, that's the one with the porch in the middle. It's a little different. It's, like there's it's just two- a feature image available, I guess, at the moment. We don't have any other pictures of Pisgah. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, we just finished it. Uh, it's for sale. It's outside. We did the we did a video last week, and uh, I think we're doing the photo shoot this week. So the real, the real photos of the first one should be released pretty soon. All right, that's one that's kind of a risky design. I designed that one myself, just to. It was more geared towards probably short term rentals, like a really unique place to stay, because the bedrooms and bathroom are on one side, and you have to walk out across a ten foot covered timber deck to go into the kitchen living room um you know some people i would live full-time in that even if it was like kind of a cold climate you just have to walk outside it's covered but that one was uh had a lot of good feedback from it but it is a kind of a risky design that's probably our most expensive build i think it starts at 151 possibly somewhere in the 150s Having said that, I'd request you to uh, send me the pictures and the videos of both Pisca and Teleco whenever possible. You or Dia, whoever can send that. Yeah, so we yeah, can I'll, actually uh, cover I'll, it I'll, because we're not able to cover it because we don't we didn't have the pictures at this point of time. Yeah. I we didn't have a, the details I'll, on the spec sheet, but we didn't have the pictures. Yeah, I think all we had was a render, a rendering and the yeah. specs. Um I will I'll wait till uh the actual photo shoot because we'll stage it. Um once that's released, then you could do a full that that one we're wanting to push out there. So we we'd love for that one to be featured and the teleco. Um we had to rush that one off to the events that we didn't even like take, we didn't even do a photo shoot. So we've got pictures of it at the events and on the road, but other than the Cumberland, um, or did we do a teleco walkthrough? Anyway, if they haven't, those that'll be coming out and you guys are welcome to um yeah, if you do have Teleco pictures, pictures please please tell Dia to send them to me. Yeah. And beyond that, those are kind of probably the last tiny homes that we've um, developed. And then now we're kind of focusing on modular. And, and there, the we are going to release some ADU models early next year. Um, so they'll be modular, not on a trailer frame, three different sizes. And we're targeting, you're familiar with ADUs, the backyard. Yes, yeah, I do know. Uh, except, yeah. Uh, accessory dwelling unit and they're actually allowed in a lot of places nearby us nashville chattanooga atlanta like a lot of residential code allows you to put an accessory dwelling unit in your backyard to rent out or in-laws can live there you know just an extra room so we're we're going to develop three models and um, kind of roll those out so those will be our first modular models that we roll out and you know and beyond that we're hoping for bigger contracts like development communities, um, cottage clusters. Um, we're doing a student housing project here for a university nearby. Um, short-term rental hospitality brands like uh, custom branded outdoor stays for for resorts. Those will be all custom. Like if we're doing 10, 20, 50, um, we're going to work with them to design a specific home. So with modular, we're not going to be so focused on like releasing all these perfect floor plans and models. Um, You know, we'll have a few, but I think the most of our business is going to be um, groups coming to us. And and we have a pre, we have a pre-construction design service that we offer. And, you know, we go through and you end up with a customized tailored design. Because a lot of these companies, they want it, have its own feel, its own 
materials, its own look. It's very much like their identity, their brand. So we can, we can customize that, which is really cool. That's how we started the company was you dream it. We can build it. If you look at all of our old builds, they're all like crazy and you can't scale that. Um, it was a great start. It put us on the map. And as we've scaled, that's been the hard part for me is like, you have to standardize to like be able to mass produce a home to build a lot of homes. So this goes back to the custom where we can design something really cool and custom, but then we're building 50 of them and there's your efficiency. You know, you're, we're not going to custom design just one-offs anymore. Maybe that'll be a branch of our company one day, like five build spots for you dream it. We can build it five a year, get it while you can. Maybe that's like a, a wing of our company, but we really wanted to grow the business to offer different housing solutions more for the masses to solve, you know, to give people out there that yeah. are looking for something. You've different. had any celebrity clients? Did any celebrity, any Hollywood star or sports person contact you that I want, I want you to build me a tiny home or I want to buy this particular tiny home? Uh, not really any, uh, we've done a, we've done a couple TV shows like in the past. Um, we did a little partnership with Chevy Trucks and they did like a little video with them. I think from that, I, th I think a former basketball player reached out to do something. Nothing came of it. I don't even remember his name, but nothing, you know, that hasn't really, some tiny home builders, the whole influencer thing, like, I don't know, we, we've just been so busy and like kind of just focus on like the projects at hand that we've probably even let our social media and YouTube kind of our presence, you know, playing catch up we don't have like maybe a massive following account but we've just been so focused on the business now we're looking at more opportunity to like get our name out there and uh with the right influencer celebrity it might make sense but we're we're pretty calculated like in our is it gonna is it in our best interest is it gonna help grow the company is it a good fit so you know we will turn down things where like stud feel like a good fit but it would be cool to do something that gets some national attention, something like a really cool project. Uh, I think that would be pretty, pretty neat. But it would have to, it would have to fit with what we're what we're doing. Wonderful. Those TV shows, they were great when we did them. They helped put us on the map. But I don't think I'd do another TV show. It's uh, now we don't really need the, the brand recognition and to like blast our following count. It, it helped us early on, but it's a headache. The TV shows are the reality. TV shows are tough so since since you spoke business uh i'd also like to inform you that we are also working on a tiny house ebook which will be based on the best tiny houses we've seen in 2023 and uh, mm -hmm. as of now we were actually planning to feature cumberland but we'll we'll, we'll have to see how teleco and pesca is and uh, do yeah. you have any affiliate plans or this is off the record, not part of interview. We'll have to edit this, but do you yeah. have any affiliate plans or any other stuff that you can offer to us? And then we could just uh, revert back the traffic we get, the inquiries we get that we could send to you and revert back to you. Yeah. So you're saying people just reaching out that are interested, uh, how to get them in contact with us. Yes. That yes. That's what I'm telling you. Um, well, I'm trying to, our, I mean, I'm guessing, I mean, I've read some of your article, I mean, I've seen some, it's, it's got our, our URL and website on there, correct? And like, I mean, they can link from your article to our website. Yes, yes. That's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Because it, and then if you funnel into there, we we're constantly refining to like, we want to get qualified leads. You know, there's a lot of people that just want to reach out and ask tiny house questions um, it's, I'm, I'm not talking of general question. I'm talking of people who want to buy a tiny house. Yeah. Well, so yeah, they, so you Those come into that inquiries, fund. Yeah. yeah. So we have a way to funnel that from our website where the best chance of getting a response from us is like, it, you're really interested in this model. This is your budget. This is your timeline. Um, we, we get to those very quickly. Um, so if people are going to your, your site, reading the article, uh, they can click on our website and contact us that way. I'm trying to think there might be a way where it's like a more direct, just because that's a lot of clicks. You got to go here. Yeah. You got to go here. Um, and we're always looking for like, for people that are really interested, you want that direct path. So uh, we could think about 
that um i don't know is do you have you are you familiar with ways of going straight from like a, an article that you guys write to um other than going through a website obviously we're probably not gonna put our phone number on there you can get our phone number on our website our office line um, but i can think about that more and talk to dia just uh if you guys are really getting like a lot of high interest on like that Cumberland home yeah, or any of the Most homes. of our traffic is actually people who like creating tiny houses, who like inquiring about them and who want to buy one. Yeah. So yeah, if people I'll think just about, have uh, an affiliate can, that, partnership with Wind River Tiny Homes and Home Crux could collaborate to get a foreign affiliate partnership, that oh, would yeah. be great. I that see, that yeah, is okay, what yeah, I was I talking about because... I see what you're saying. Not the funnel just to us, but like just for driving. Yeah. Or, or it's something if... Um, if they're coming from your site, having some sort of uh, something worked out, if it's driving yes. a lot of traffic that lead to sales. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, we can, um, I don't know if we do that. Dia would know more. She's on the marketing side. Um, I'll I'll make a note to like talk to her about that. See if we've done that before with other publications or groups. Um, you know, it could almost be like a referral type. Maybe it's as simple as a, a referral type thing, anybody that comes through from home crux or something. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. doing. Yep. Well, uh, I'll make note of that to, to talk to her about that. And then as far as that book, the ebook, uh, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to feature, be featured in that. And um, the Cumberland is really nice. It's a simple design. Uh, the Pisgah is a wow factor. I mean, even it's sitting out in the parking lot, I'll, I'll send you, uh, I have your email, I'll send you, I'll go outside and take a picture of it. it's probably it's not one that we'd want to be used like it's just gonna be with my phone I'll send you no a worries no worries I... if you could just send me some exterior shots some interior shots yeah. because i guess the rest of the information is available on the spec sheet yeah yeah and that one and then uh so that's what i was gonna ask when does that book when is that getting like released or when, when we're actually you planning an outline assets? at the moment we're actually planning an outline at the moment we'll feature 25 to 30 tiny houses of 2023 uh, which will include wind river tiny homes minimalist stay freights and other manufacturer as well and we'll also have interviews of five or seven tiny house builders that we've done in past including you as well okay it'll, also, it'll yeah, still there's... take like uh us two months it'll, when it gets published i'll definitely it'll, it'll take two months to get published minimum that's bare minimum. Okay. okay well yeah we'll definitely i just want to make sure there was time to get like the professional photo shoot assets of it to you in time we'll but just for the time being so you can see it all i'll go out and snap a couple pictures so you can see that would it. Be i think that so would i can be feature cool. it on magazine tomorrow that one would be yeah that would be a Cool to feature that one, I think, because it's just it's not like a tiny house you've seen where it's split into two with a connecting deck. So, so I'm, I'm yeah. pretty excited to see this now. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, uh, what do you do when you're not building tiny homes? Are you not guiding your employees what to do? How do you spend your typical day? Um, so outside of outside of work, yeah, we're outside, at, of, we're work. At Windsor. outside of work, yeah. Um, I'm a so I don't do much of the building anymore or my business partner. We up until just a couple of years ago, we were out on the shop floor still building. Uh, so I'm a carpenter. I have a shop at home. I'm actually expanding our, we have a barn, a pole barn that I'm expanding and turning into um, kind of a second little home on our property, a rental, just a, a space. Um, so I, I love building. So on the side, you know, looking for properties and land to, to, you know, build short-term rentals or unique spaces. We've got, we've got land in the country, 12 acres, and I just love developing and building. I don't have nearly as much time to do that now. I guess I'm doing that on the business side. Um, it's kind of like our customer that, that we sell to that builds like really unique short-term rentals. I would love to be on that side of the business and build up a portfolio. So enjoy real estate developing, building, I'm a carpenter, uh, and then our whole family, uh, my wife and little one and I, uh, we travel a lot and love the outdoors. We just got back from Iceland and Switzerland last month, just the three of us, just, you know, three weeks and or two weeks in Europe. Uh, so travel, any chance we can get, that's huge to see in the world. Um, and then we're avid outdoorsmen. So we're always outside, you know, in the mountains. 
So that's kind of. I, I live in mountains uh, too. I live in mountains too. Yeah. I'm based oh, sorry, in India, you, but uh, I'm based in Nadran, India. It is Shimla. It is based. It is in Himachal Pradesh. I'm not sure if you've heard of it or not. So it's pretty well, good at the moment, and uh, there's a possibility it might snow during Christmas. Really? Yeah. Northern India is on our list for sure. I would love to spend like a couple of days in the big, you know, in New Delhi or a big city, and then like. Get up into the foothills. Uh, so yeah, Northern India is probably. I'd love our... to invite you to Northern India. New Delhi is more of a plain area. It's a metropolitan city. There's a lot of crowd, yeah. and it's it's also a hot city. I'd then love to invite you to Shimla. So in case you make any plans, just give me a call. I will let you know. Yeah, we love we love traveling the world. It's harder now. Just the business is like, it's become a lot something bigger than we ever thought. So it's a it's a lot of work now. But we try to break away. Um, at least a two big two week trip every year and then a bunch of stuff domestically when we can but um, yeah traveling traveling designing building carpentry uh, dreaming up new home ideas and designs I love architect my dream was to be an architect and the school and the math and all that back in the day kind of scared me away from like I don't want to go to school for that many years and and it kind of full circle I get to design homes and then work with architects and engineers to to do all the you completed your graduation in which field um well i was in business uh business management getting associates um and never never finished so i actually don't have a degree but it's kind of a cool story my i had like maybe two semesters left my last semester i had a class where you create a business plan like a fake business plan and i created it uh on Wind River Tiny Homes. It was right at that time that I was uh, had just heard about tiny homes. Maybe I'd already bought my trailer and was starting. I don't even remember the timing. I never went back after that class. So I did a business plan on Wind River Tiny Homes, started the company. And so I've been in school ever since uh, building a business. <laughs> no degree on the wall, but I've learned so much more uh, over the 10 years actually just starting a business. So, and my business partner as well, we're both hands-on we're like product design people. That's like our, um, you know, I don't think he's got a degree either, but um, that's kind of where our focus is. And then we've got a really great team of, you know, we've got a great CFO that came from the corporate world. He's a CPA and didn't want to do the corporate thing. So came and worked for a scrappy startup, tiny home company. And um, so we've got like a really good core team and everybody's really good at what they do. The two owners just don't have a degree, but a lot of a lot of the big CEO, companies don't. The CEO that, that you're mentioning to, he's 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 the person you were mentioning to when you said he was among the board of directors of the U.S. Tiny House Association. Uh, that's our our CFO. So our CFO, CFO, yeah. If you go on our contact or our um, about us um, on the website, Paul Beckman is our CFO, and he's the one on the board of directors, Thea. And then Caleb Knowles, uh, he's the one that's you know been with me pretty much from the start, almost the start. He's our COO. And then, so we're actually all three owners. Caleb and I are you know all right. majority owners. So yeah. All right, so, Travis. Yeah, yeah, Travis. It was really nice having you with Homecrux today, and I wish you all the very best for your future. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, bye, Travis. Thank you. Goodbye. Yep. Goodbye.